Blame Truth here, and Black Ops 6 has been out for seven days, unless you did the New Zealand glitch like a weirdo. I don't know why you would do that, because then you just face other mega sweat lords. But maybe the skill-based matchmaking is so insane, it doesn't matter. I don't know, but for the most part, for the most part. This game's been out for seven days, exactly, as of 1031. 24 here, Halloween day. Um, man, this game, guys... It's been it's been interesting. It's been interesting because I've been saying that this is arguably the worst Call of Duty of all time. And I've been trying to explain things in various videos, but I thought maybe I should just explain it in one fell swoop here in one longer video and hit all my points. I mean, look at this. For one, I'm killing these people who are loading into the game. Uh, they're not like they're in the game. They're not idle. They're loading into the game. It spawns your character model into the match before you take control of your character model. It is the weirdest fucking thing on top of just the rampant quitting. Anyway, so many people quitting. I don't know why. Maybe they're on game pass and they're like, this game sucks. I'm leaving. I, I really don't understand it. I have never seen so much quitting in a call of duty game, but Hey, Whatever, man. Whatever. I, I kind of get it. Uh, let's just kind of go over all of the things that I hate after going over the things that I like. As for the things that I like, I've, I've pretty much narrowed it down to the gun feel and the gun play. But this is something that Call of Duty has never really messed up on. This game feels good when you shoot people. I think that's why we enjoy Call of Duty, even though we hate everything else in a lot of instances. is like, it feels good when you shoot people. It does. Outside of that, man, I, I really have no praises whatsoever for, for anything. And I, I'm sorry if that's harsh. I, like, this is a very divisive Call of Duty. I haven't seen this much divide since, like, Tide Pods were popular, where one side's like, I'm gonna eat fucking Tide Pods and record it, and the other side's like, that's fucking stupid, you goddamn idiot. This is what it feels like with this COD. It's either love it or despise it. There's no real in-between from what I've seen. I've seen, I've seen a lot of people lose the honeymoon phase with this game very quickly. In my opinion, it's, I mean, right away, I just got to say, it, it's got to be either the worst or the bottom tier for Call of Duty games I have played. Let me just explain everything, break everything down. This may be a longer video. I'm not sure. I'm just kind of going to wing it. Uh, let's start with the obvious flaw here. And I'm just talking about multiplayer. I'm not talking about zombies or campaign. Um, you may want to check out the game for those two modes. I did play a little bit of zombies and I wasn't a huge fan because it reminded me of Warzone. I just, I'm not really into Cold War or Warzone zombies. I like the old school zombies. So I don't think I'll be playing it this year, but who knows? Anyway, let's discuss the actual multiplayer though, because this game is, um, fucking terrible. I, I can't get over how bad it is. I want to lead this off by saying that there are a lot of people, again, that absolutely love this game, but I find that the Call of Duty community is super emotional and knee-jerk, and I don't really trust anything they have to say. The best advice I can give you every single year is wait about a month, maybe even two, and then see what the actual consensus is, and that's usually the fair rating for this Call of Duty game, for example. I mean, Modern Warzone... Just showing what I'm talking about here. Don't trust people unless it's me. And I, I don't think I'm overly harsh. I think I'm just realistic because usually people will end up agreeing with me after a few months pass, but whatever. So the, the obvious thing, the obvious flaw with this game, the maps. Um, <laughs> man, these maps are so bad to, to me personally, to me personally, even if, if I don't go over anything else, these maps are so fucking bad. This is about unplayable. Maps are the most important thing in any multiplayer arcade shooter, in my humble opinion. I've been playing these games for nearly 20 years. A lot of people are saying these aren't worse than Modern Warfare 2019's maps. Like, that's the worst one, bar none. I'm going to say that, no, these are... Hang on, hang on. I, I don't mean to emote here, by the way. I don't know what's going on. I'm just a weird fucking thing, man. Why, why third-person emotes in general? You can use those as exploits, by the way, to see around corners. Especially useful in Search and Destroy. I, I don't even know if I'll get to that in this video, but there you go. There's, there's an exploit. There's a problem with that right away. Anyway, compared to Modern Warfare 2019, these are equal, if not worse, because these just feel like shrunken down modern warfare 2019 maps at the end of the day and i i wish i was joking with that what you're seeing here is probably and i say probably because it still sucks probably the best map in the game 
Uh, either this or Skyline and maybe Vorkuta, I would say, are, are passable. And by passable, I mean I can play them, but they're not enjoyable, especially if spawns get weird and they usually get weird pretty fucking quickly. It, they've abandoned like the three lane thing. If, if you notice payback here, that lane looking over the B flag is just gone. It's just a cliffside that you can't get around. So a lot of these maps aren't even three lane. I, I try to picture them in my head and I look over them and from the, from the top down view. And when I play them, I also try to picture three lanes. And in a lot of instances, I can't. It seems like every map is just this fucking fishbowl with random cover in the middle. And then on the sides, the lanes don't act as flanks. They act as these like weird, just head glitch, long range sight lines, almost for snipers. It's it's so weird. A, a great example of this is the map Babylon, if you've played that. I unfortunately don't have gameplay of that because, I, I'll be honest with you guys, I have tried my damnedest to play this game. I cannot. I just flat out cannot. I, I'm going to wait for Nuketown tomorrow and probably just play that just to get to my, my you know, max level or whatever. Don't think I'll prestige either, honestly. I, I really don't because this game's too sweaty to do so, even with uh, SBMM off VPN, which you can check that out in the description. It makes playing this game solo somewhat bearable. Without that, though, I, I legit wouldn't even bother with this game. It's, it's that bad if you're playing solo. And I'm an introvert. I love playing solo. I, I've been playing solo since Call of Duty 4. That's my main way to play these games. I'm telling you right now, no exaggeration, literally unplayable. Like, <laughs> just bare bones, naked, solo, you know, if you're, if you're any good whatsoever. But let's get back to the map, sorry. They're fucking terrible. I, again, Payback, Vercuda, and Skyline are the only ones that I would say are decent, and I, I truly mean decent. I don't, I don't mean good. These are not future classics by any stretch of the imagination. They're just the maps that seem like a little bit of thought was put in them, but Payback really needs that third lane on the left there, overlooking the B flag from the house. Why that's just not there, I have no idea. It's like the easiest spot to put a little flank around to the spawn. But even still, this map will blow if the spawns get fucked up. Safe spaces, head glitches, basically no flanks, and and we'll get into flanks and that particular playstyle in a bit because Treyarch have managed to completely fucking kill a Call of Duty staple playstyle, and I'm not exaggerating there. I'm not kidding. Uh, let's lead into spawns first, though. These spawns are something special, and you might be thinking, well, the maps are really tiny. That's another thing I haven't really covered, just talking about the maps being crappy anyway, is that a lot of them are really small. The maps range from about small to medium, although red card, that map seems quite large, and it's also quite bad. Honestly, one of the worst maps I've ever played on, so it's, it's like doesn't really matter the size, all of the maps are just not very good. But uh, you might be thinking the spawn system is bad because the maps are small overall or medium size overall, but that is not necessarily the case because I've literally played uh, X Defiant for the past several months since it came out in May, and they released a map called Rockefeller. If you've played that map, you know it's pretty tiny. It's about the size of, realistically, it's about the size of shipment. But it has this kind of like outer square ring that kind of acts as a outer flank point or whatever, as well as a spawn point. So that enables the map to play really well and flow really well. It's not just like spawn die. And the spawns are usually really good on the map. Uh, I'll see if I can transition to a Rockefeller gameplay here, actually, because I don't think I want to post another Black Ops 6 gameplay anyway. But... um. That map in particular is small, but like there's never really any issues with spawns. Same with uh, the map Arena on that game. It's a small map, it's chaotic, but there's some like technique to the chaos. There's some thought put into like your actions and whatnot. You know what I mean? Like you have these back areas to flank in and spawn in, and that keeps things safe and, and flowing and good. Black Ops 6 just has none of that. A prime example of this is like Babylon. Like Babylon, there's no nice way to put this, but Babylon is literally like if Call of Duty devs tried to remake the map Rockefeller, but then they just like hit their head and got severe brain damage while they did it. It's that bad. It truly is that bad. 
But anyway, the spawns. Let me talk you through this. This is a clip from Reddit. Now, on the small maps, especially the face-off maps, the bad spawn system becomes very, very problematic, as you see here. This is just inexcusable, in my opinion. This should not happen no matter what, but just playing normally. I want to show you guys this. I got this from like an hour of playtime today. I respawn here on Derelict, and I run out of the train car or whatever. The UAV sweeps. Nobody's behind me. I turn around, and I'm like, oh, this guy must have Ghost or something. No, look at the perks. He does not have Ghost. If you look at the kill feed, I'm going to play this again. Look at the kill feed. He dies. It respawns right behind me in a team deathmatch game. No excuse. Like, I die, respawn. He respawns right behind me and shoots me in the fucking back. Inexcusable. Inex-fucking-excusable. So this is the same match on Derelict, by the way. Kill this guy in front of me. Run up the stairs. Somehow someone's behind me. I'm not even going to look at the kill feed to see if he flanked or not. But I respawn and I'm immediately looking at someone. I'm immediately in an engagement. I'm like shocked when this happens. I don't expect it ever. I go up here. I kill this guy. And this is a, a medium sized map here. This is a bigger map. Kill this guy. Run up the back here. Reload. And again, I see this guy out of the corner of my eye. I think he's a teammate because I'm the only one back here. It's a revenge spawn, and it catches me off guard because I'm not prepared for it. I go up here, I kill this guy on fucking Scud, and I try to reload, and like I can't reload cancel to kill that guy behind me. I respawn pretty much in the same spot behind these guys. I kill one of them, but there's two. I get packet burst, and then I respawn pretty much in the same spot again. I, I, I just don't know what to say other than this is inexcusable. This is skill equalized bullshit meant for the lowest common denominator, thumbless fucking player. And all of these problems get amplified with the matchmaking. I can sit up here and say everything in the world about the skill based matchmaking, engagement optimized matchmaking. I've covered it in countless videos. I will just say this. If you are wanting to play a video game and get better at it and see your performance and all that stuff improve over time, if you think you'll have a better time, the better you get at Black Ops 6, you are in for a rude awakening, my friend. Not only will you get harder competition, you will run into more cheaters, you will run into people playing cheaper, they're not necessarily better, they're just fucking cheaper, and you will run into more connection problems. The skill-based matchmaking is so fucking bad on top of the spawn system and the maps that just those three things alone should make this game unplayable for most people if you have a brain i'm sorry if you like this game like black ops 6 i mean I, i'm very sorry uh I, i'm not trying to insult your taste or your intelligence or whatever but i truthfully just don't see how anyone with a functioning brain could actually like this game that's not a content creator or whatever it's so fucking bad I could sit up here and harp about the rigged ass matchmaking all damn day. I could say how it's unplayable solo, and it is. I could say all this stuff. I'll just say that however bad you think it is from me just describing it, it's worse than you think it actually is. The better you are at Call of Duty, the worse your experience is going to be down to your connection. And speaking of connection, we need to get into that the net code, the net code of Black Ops 6. Uh, it's funny, I'm bringing you this X Defiant gameplay. X Defiant's had a lot of net code issues since it launched. I never really get over 30 ping in this game. Sometimes I'll get 50 if I'm connecting to like central servers or whatever. But my connection in X Defiant is pretty damn stable. I rarely have issues with the net code. I recognize that sometimes it's there, but it's not, it's never really been an issue for me personally. But uh, people have been roasting this game for, for its netcode or whatever. Here comes Black Ops 6 with literally an, a worse netcode. And um, nobody's really saying shit. I mean, they're complaining about it, sure. But it's it's worse. It's it's not even debatable, I don't think. It's it's 100% worse in Black Ops 6. The hit detection, the netcode, whatever you want to call it, is completely fucked. I've been covering the idea of the conspiracy theory of skill-based damage. And while I'm not... Um, I don't think we're getting nerfed in real time. I really don't personally. I think that's a bit ridiculous. I do think there is some validity to the fact that if you're in a higher SBMM bracket lobby, you are more likely to experience these issues 
issues because your connection is going to factually get worse. Yes, again, I need to reiterate this. Your connection, your ping will get worse the better you are at Call of Duty. This has been proven years ago in Cold War and nothing has changed. You will get higher pings because you are connecting to people in the upper echelon of the game, the top 10% of the people, and that top 10%, it's just 10%. So you have less people to connect to. You, they may be further away. Your ping will suffer. And honestly, Call of Duty servers are so goddamn bad anyway. It's, it's 20 tickery. It's always been pretty piss poor. Something has changed with Black Ops 6 to where it is just abysmal. The, I, I would actually bring you more clips of this. I haven't experienced it that much. I started playing with a VPN because I was getting packet loss, more packet bursts than ever, and I was getting thrown into matches in progress on a blowout losing team constantly while playing solo. And I noticed that with SBMM off at the very least, I don't have too many hit detection issues in Black Ops 6 with that VPN. When it was off though, I did. I'm not playing with it off for clips because I, I can barely stand playing the game with the VPN. So I'm sorry, but I will bring you some clips from Reddit or whatever. Every single year you see stuff like this because again, Call of Duty has like 20 tick rate servers. But something about the speed of Black Ops 6 combined with all the new Game Pass people playing, combined with just the fact that Treyarch has always kind of had wonky netcode and aim resist and all kinds of weird stuff, just leads to all these problems, I think. And it's, it's just a mess. Whatever you believe, if you believe you're getting nerfed in real time or you just think the servers are crap because they're cheap, whatever the case may be, the connection, the fluidity of the game is not good. And even with SBMM off, uh, I used it earlier and I noticed hitching and like, it wasn't showing packet bursts or anything, but I could feel it in game, if that makes sense. Almost like a tiny little bit of rubber banding, just hitching like every 10 to 20 seconds. It was really, really fucking bad and noticeable. And it was, uh, I, it was the last match I played before I hopped off here and made this video, to be honest. But yeah, the netcode being how it is makes the time to kill so inconsistent. Again, there's rumors floating around that there's skill-based damage. So there's that. On top of packet burst still being a thing, on top of packet loss still being a thing, the game runs like shit. Let's move on, no pun intended, to the movement. I want to cover the movement before this last sin of Treyarch here. Uh, I've praised the movement from the beta. It has improved, but there is a big, big problem with this movement, and that is that it's still designed with the remnants of Warzone there, and it's clunky as fuck. When I go back and play X Defiant, I'm not trying to make this like a X Defiant versus COD video, and I can admit when COD does things right, you know, I really can. But when I play X Defiant and then I go play Black Ops 6, the best way I can describe it is I feel really heavy. If you are on PC and you have a high frame rate, you know, capable rig, run X Defiant at a high frame rate on controller and then run... Black Ops 6 at a high frame rate on controller, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And X Defiant, I feel like someone who can parkour. You know, like the movement feels fluid and things chain together very naturally. And even if, you, even if you hate this game, I think the movement's very, very good. On Black Ops 6, I had this feeling of heaviness, and it, it's even there when I aim. It feels like I'm a sumo wrestler on ice, is the best way I can describe the Omni movement system. I, I feel very, very heavy. Again, even when I aim, it feels like there's a delay or there's like a lack of acceleration or whatever. And I could mess around with the settings and whatnot. And I could change some stuff around. But I have been. And it still feels weird. It feels not that great. It feels clunky. I don't know how else to describe it. Many times I want to just crouch. But I end up sliding, so I, I want to just like crouch behind cover and reload or something, but I end up sliding behind cover and like falling off a fucking ledge or something because I have to turn sprint always on so that I can get the omni movement sprint always on in one direction without clicking the stick. That's pretty much the recommended settings. It's what feels the best, but that causes that issue because you're always sprinting. Add to the fact that when you are sprinting, normal sprinting to the left and right, you have sprint out time. 
And sprint out time, if you don't know what that is, it's sprint to fire time. It's like the time it takes to pull up your gun and start firing outside of a sprint. So in an attempt to make the game faster with the movement, they've honestly, in a way, made the game clunkier because you have that speed, but you have the sprint out time still. And from what I can tell, gung-ho does not help that in-game. The, the perk does something different from previous games where it lets you instantly fire out of a sprint, essentially, or fire while sprinting, I should say. So it feels like shit. Honestly, add to that, we have Tactical Sprint, which is there, I guess, for Warzone purposes, I don't know, which adds another layer onto the, the Sprint to Fire times, and it pretty much doubles that, which makes it more clunky. I just don't like it. I do not like the movement system, and at first, I'm like, eh, it feels pretty good sometimes, but overall, I mean, I just cannot make sense of it. I can't make logical sense of it. Add to the fact that you have another set of movements that's not even being used with, like, the regular walk speed, you know, if you have this um, setting on by default, the, the sprint, uh, the auto omnidirectional sprint or whatever, if you have that on by default, then you don't even really experience just the default walking speeds. So uh, it's, it's just, it doesn't play well. I just don't think it plays well. Nero brought up in his video, the Omni movement, especially in high SBMM lobbies, means if you run across two people, you essentially have no chance of killing them because it makes the engagements random. At any point, anyone could jump or dive or slide in any direction and completely fuck you up. And it's not like a skill thing, it's just like, oh, this guy dove to the left and this guy slid to the right, I can't do anything. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? It's a bit of a mess. And now I'm going to get into the last thing here, which is just... Treyarch has killed off the stealth flank playstyle. On one hand, that playstyle is killed off from the maps. As I said, a lot of the flanks and lanes and stuff like that are not really flank routes. They're more like head glitch, long range sight lines in every single map in Black Ops 6. But to add to that... Treyarch have made the dumbest fucking perk I have ever seen. It's not even a perk, it's a specialty or whatever the hell it's called. It's recon. This single-handedly fucks up any stealth because upon every spawn of you, you see where every enemy is on the map. Add to the fact that it works at the start of the game, as you can see here. Add to the fact that you get rewarded for dying. Add to the fact that there's no counter for it. There's no ghost or anything that can counter it. I mean, there's ghost, but it doesn't counter this. Meaning you cannot flank. If someone has this on, you cannot flank and surprise them if they respawn. And trust me, they will respawn randomly because everyone's dying because this entire game is a skill-equalized, skill-based matchmaking hellhole. They've killed it off. Much like Infinity Ward with Modern Warfare 2 killed off rushing, Treyarch have killed off flank stealth play. Something that's been in the game since as, as long as I could remember. And nobody's really talking about this. And God damn it, we need to. I'm out of time, guys. I, I think that about covers it. There's a lot of nitpicky things I could cover, like the minimap not showing my teammates triangles for whatever reason if they're too far away, or, or the fact that there's not real gun names, or the fact that I have to launch the game twice with COD HQ, or update requires restart, or what have you. I could go on and on, but the core foundation of this game and this is like pretty objective stuff I'm showing you, is so fucked. It's so fucked. No matter what they do content-wise, they could add 20 more prestiges, another mastery camo. They could have somebody come and jerk me off while I play. The game would still be shit because these core issues are busted. They've had four years to work on it. If they haven't fixed it in four years, they're not going to fix it in this game's life cycle, which is only one year. It's not going to happen. They're going to sell you the solution with next year's title. So, I don't know, man. The game sucks. End of story. I want to nail the Treyarch lead map designer to the fucking cross.